powerboat racing, toughest of seaborne sports, took on a new look in the 1969 calendar when a unique event was announced and a wide variety of craft took shape in home and overseas boatyards. The Daily Telegraph and BP were joint sponsors of the first ever round Britain race with £17,000 in prize money for strictly amateur crews. Entry lists included flat-out racing craft, outboard inflatables, and a whole range of large and small cruisers, like these fairy marine huntsmen fitted with twin diesel truck engines, all ready to have a go at riding the white horses. Forty-two boats rolled up to the line off Portsmouth and Southsea, and a large crowd saw the Duke of Edinburgh fire the start gun. Weather forecasts were good for the first 170-mile run to Falmouth. The race scheduled 10 stages and one Grand Prix-style spurt round the Isle of Man. Among the leaders was John Kennelly's Maltese Magnum Twin, punching a thousand horsepower into one propeller. Also well up were the Morris brothers, Derek and Michael, joined in Ford Power by veteran of the game, Vic Miller. Three 21-year-olds crewed the outboard-powered inflatable psychedelic surfer, a remarkable little craft which was soon to become the darling of the crowds on beach and headland. In spite of calm seas to Falmouth, there were four retirements, and 909, after a hasty prop shaft repair, made landfall just inside the time limit. Lady Aitken led the Sea Spray team with Thelma Freeman on board. Both had six seasons of powerboat experience behind them. In 707, Ford Sport had one-time test pilot Peter Twiss at the helm and motor rally champion Roger Clark in his crew. American-built UFO 123 with Tim Powell and Norman Barkley, both well-known on the international powerboat scene. approach Douglas still in calm waters with an overnight stop before tomorrow's island circuit. Everyone wondered just how long the fickle English weather would hold so good. sportsman John Freeman skippered Ford Speed, a man who'd been messing about in boats since his 12th birthday.
Avenger 2, a fast, spectacular racing boat, used the calm seas to Falmouth and Milford Haven to gain two firsts. She dropped to number three on the third leg to the Isle of Man, but was still overall leader in the hands of Finland's rally ace, Timo Mäkinen. Spectators crowded the cliffs when the wind changed to force six and the sea boiled over on the Isle of Man circuit. Surfacing from the depths of a very ugly sea was John Corcutt's crew in their rubber boat, so aptly named Psychedelic Surfer. trouble for one of the Bovril team boats near the rocks at the southern tip of the island. An engine failure in six-foot waves and a strong undertow left no alternative to signalling for help. The volunteer manned lifeboats around the entire course gave their usual magnificent service. accepted, but this meant disqualification from the race. After repairs, they continued as a service boat to their team. Sometimes the battle was fought miles out at sea, 
And Britain's holidaymakers continued their traditional ways with sand, sea, and an unusually long spell of sunshine. Thirty-three boats were still in there pitching on the long run up to the Scottish islands and Oban. Some said this would be the real testing time and spoke darkly of a treacherous whirlpool around the Jura Sound. But the weather played another trick and produced blue skies and a soft southern wind. Tim Powell's UFA was still up with Maltese Magnum, G and Avenger 2. This racing pack being pressed hard by the Ford team. pause from competitive racing was welcomed at the halfway stage on the Caledonian Canal. A leisurely journey through the many locks and a time to sort things out above and below decks. Cleaning ship at close quarters, fine weather and a holiday atmosphere soon brought out some high-spirited clowning. The relaxing time through the canal led up to a busy period of checks, overhauls and scrutineering at Inverness before they were leaping away again, this time with a new hazard, fog in the North Sea. Ralph Hilton's HTS was leader in the foggy, rough run down to Dundee. Now the boats became prisoners of the fog and officials called a 24-hour halt at Dundee on the grounds of safety. Crew members and friends drifted aimlessly about in the damp, listless air, asking endless questions and waiting. The wind cleared the fog and 30 survivors set off in great form to Whitby. That same wind built up a running sea that soon made the seventh stage one of the toughest in the race.
HTS took the lead at first, but collapse of an engine mounting put them right out of the race. Psychedelic surface crew described this stage as sheer hell, and Polly Perkins was going very well until she later lost her propeller and joined the retirement stakes. Not far behind was Botany Bay Express, but a split hull meant a lot of pumping, and she too was out by the end of the day. Sport, Fiducia, and Avenger 2 showed what power boating was really about when the sea turned on the wilder side of its nature. Do-it-yourself repairs were hazardous enough on a swaying craft, but in spite of wet hands, nobody dropped the screwdriver, and Foam Flyer was soon back in the race. Boating has been described as hitting a concrete wall, sliding down a glacier and hitting the wall again. The Morris Brothers and Vic Miller would endorse every word of that. The sea calmed down again from Whitby to Yarmouth, and on the ninth stage to Ramsgate, conditions were flat as a mill pond.
Tim Power led at all three stages from Dundee, but still Mackinnon was ahead on overall time. With the end now in sight, Powell was determined to narrow the gap and swept round the south coast as though jet propelled. swept in through a nautical traffic jam to the Portsmouth finishing line, their fourth win in a row, but overall victory went to Avenger 2. Both these racing craft took full advantage of the calm seas at the opening and closing stages of the race. Third, fourth and fifth overall were the diesel offshore cruisers Ford Power, Ford Sport and Sea Spray. These weekend boats had kept full pressure on the leaders, also gaining team and production awards plus the ladies prize. This longest ever powerboat race captured the imagination of a wide public, thrilled thousands of holidaymakers and proved a magnificent testing ground for boats, engines and those remarkable people who ride the white horses. <laughs>